In how to, you sought expert help with some uh, questions, and you went to really top-notch experts. You went to uh, astronaut Chris Hadfield yes. because you had very specific, there he is, just to prove that we have a photo of him. Uh, <laughs> Don't know why that popped up. Uh, <laughs> you, wanted, uh, you wanted his advice. What is, what is the questions that you wanted him to answer? Well, I was doing a chapter on how to make an emergency landing, and I wanted to try covering all of the like, weird scenarios that might not be covered in a normal guide to you know, flying a plane. So I came up with a list of all of the strangest like, things that might happen to you, uh, scenarios where you need to land a plane. And, and he was really nice and willing to, to answer my questions. So I made, a, I made this list of scenarios and I ordered them from least ridiculous to most ridiculous. And my plan was to see how far I could get through the list before he hung up on me. Um, so you start off pretty simple, like if I'm in a plane and I have to land it, what would be the, but then you get more and more ridiculous in terms of the criteria. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I started off with what I thought was kind of Maybe, maybe the least ridiculous of them, which was uh, if you have to land a plane and you can't find any landing strips or like, you know, roads and the only open spaces are farmer's fields, uh, which crop do you try to steer toward? Um, which crop? Yeah, like, you know, you've got, you've got your sorghum and your corn and your... Uh, and so I asked, so I, I asked him this question. And, and the most fun thing about talking to, to, to Colonel Hadfield is he's, you know, he's, he's like an... He's, everything he says sounds like it's in that... Mission control astronaut voice, he's, yeah. you know, and he's, and so I asked that question, and no hesitation at all, uh, you know, and I sort of apologize, like, sorry, I know it's kind of a ridiculous question, no hesitation at all. He just says, well, that's not a ridiculous question at all. I fly small planes, and you think about that stuff all the time. Uh, when you're driving into the airfield, you look around and you think, if I had to come down there, could I? Are there cows out in their field today? How high are their beans? And then he started rattling off crops and what times of year it was safe to crash land in them. <laughs> So apparently, Give me an example. Uh, well, I remember he said corn is okay up until about the middle of June. <laughs> <laughs> I love that makes yeah. sense. It gets too high. <laughs> then it got more. You said, because I, I read the book, you said, you asked him, did he hang up on this one? You said, what would happen if I had to land the plane, but my sleeve was stuck in the door and I couldn't reach the control panel? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And I was. <laughs> Well, so, did he answer that? So I, the, the, the wonderful, talking to him was so much fun because he never paused before any of these questions, he, like, before answering. He was never like, well, I don't know about, he would just like, here's what I would do. Like, I guess that's if you're a you know, world-class test pilot. Yeah. But yeah, so I said, what if your sleeve's caught in the cockpit door and you can't reach the controls, but you've got something like maybe dinner rolls from the in-flight meals that you can throw at them. <laughs> um, could you, could you, if you were really good at throwing the dinner rolls, could you land uh, just by hitting the right controls? Um, and and he, I think he asked right away, like, well, is this a single engine plane or a multiple engine plane? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, because in, in a single engine plane, uh, no, I don't think so. But uh, in a multiple engine plane, here's what you might be able to do. And then he started laying out a landing procedure, like, based on if you have this many dinner rolls. <laughs> And you're really good at like ricocheting them, ah. how you could nudge the throttles to, to, to conceivably have a chance of bringing it down safely. That's fantastic. I yeah, love that. I, I, I love that. I couldn't stump him. I no. just kept trying. And probably he would ask, like, uh, are these rolls a little stale? That would help. <laughs> if they're a little stale, they'll have more mass. I can hit the button harder. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he would right away, like, uh, uh, always come up with the. Like, I asked him, um, I was like, what if you wanted to sell as many parts of the plane as you could on, like, Craigslist before landing? But you had to deliver them before you land. So you're going to be, like, you need stuff you can throw overboard, but then still make your landing after you're done. <laughs> um, and it turns out uh, uh, he knew exactly which parts of the plane you could. He's like, well, you can, the seats, you know, the food from the meals, uh, you can probably get money for those. You can get uh, all the, anything in the luggage, anything in the baggage or uh, compartment. That's something someone paid to transport. It's probably worth money. You can throw yeah. that overboard. Um, <laughs> And then, and, then, and then he started saying, but the thing is, when you're pulling out the seats and throwing them overboard, you can't just start at the back and move forward because the center of balance of the plane will tip too far forward. Oh my, yeah, I can't believe he's and, talking and you, to you this long. Yeah, and it, He should have hung up on you at this point. Well, that's what, so, so um, yeah, it, it, I, was, I was surprised because he kept going. He actually, um, it, when we had this conversation, I don't think I mentioned this in the book, but um, the reason we had a certain amount of time to talk uh, was he was on a layover between two flights. So... His end of this conversation was actually happening in an airport terminal. Um, and, 
And so I started realizing, oh, we're running out of time. I should start giving him an opening to, 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 to hang up, you know, to go. Yeah. And I was like, well, thank you so much for all these answers. You know, it's, and then he, uh, I know you got to go for your flight. And he would just say, oh, that's fine. We haven't called my group number yet. I can keep going, you know. Yeah. Like, it took me a while to realize, because, you know, astronauts come across as very serious sometimes. But it's like, oh, he's actually really, really enjoying he's this. He's enjoying it. Yeah. This is a fun thought um, experiment for and him. And so, yeah, he continued to answer my questions, I think, as he walked down the jetway with the other passengers and boarded the plane. <laughs> right. And I feel... Uh, at that point, I sort of, I think I sort of hung up on him <laughs> because, because all I could think was like, oh no, those poor people on that plane who are gonna hear him like walking down, he's like, well, if, if I were trapped on the outside of the plane, I think I'd try to work my way back to the tail. <laughs> uh, and, he's not putting people at ease, yeah. <laughs> but man, there, there is, there is no plane that was safer than the one that has him on it. Yeah. In, no matter what they encounter. It's they've... in my contract. I only fly with him. Uh, <laughs> okay, what I can't believe is that you got Serena Williams to help you with one of your thought experiments. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect that to, to work either. Um, I was, I was working on, uh, I had a chapter on how to catch a drone or how to, how to shoot down a drone. If it's, you know, you got one of those like wedding photography drones that yeah. you see flying around and I said, okay, well, what do you do if there's one just floating over your yard? Um, and you're, you're like, I don't know who's flying this thing. I want to get rid of it. Um, and there are all these cool ideas people have for anti-drone countermeasures and different tools and stuff that, you know, you can do. But I was curious, what if you just have like the normal stuff in your shed? Like, and so I started going through sports equipment because I was thinking, what, what would be better for shooting on a drone, a basketball or a baseball? Because, um, you know, a, a, a baseball, it seems like you can throw harder and maybe more accurately, but like a basketball is bigger. So, so I ended up, because um, I, I tend to like go on these deep dives, I started like building up this mathematical model of like uh, projectiles thrown by people in different sports and how accurate they are at hitting arbitrary targets. Um, and so I was getting all these papers on like, like accuracy of, of, you know, uh, uh, Football. Shoot, yeah, and football and like hockey and baseball and stuff. And I couldn't find great data on tennis. Um, I could, you know, I couldn't find a good paper that would like compare to the other, you know, data that I was using. And so kind of on a whim, I mean, I reached out to Serena Williams and was like, hey, I'm working on this cool thing. Um, uh, I'm working on this thing and, 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 and I, knew, I had known her husband from way back when. And so I reached out uh, and, and asked if she would be interested if, if she wanted to try hitting a target for me to, to just give me data to put into this model. Because most of the studies I was using were based on like world-class athletes. And yeah. so, so um, and, and, and it turned out she was like more than happy to help and was like, yeah, what do you need? And so I was like, okay, I don't want to take too much of her time. You know, I, this is, uh, and I don't want to give like complicated, you know, like something that's gonna like take them a while to set up and then not work out right or whatever. So I was like, okay, maybe just, if you can, if you can put a target, have someone stick a, like a, a masking tape X on the wall sometime when you're at practice and just tell me how far you are from the target and like, and, and serve trying to, trying to get the ball as close as you can to the target and videotape it, mm -hmm. then I can like use that to feed into my model. Um, but it turns out uh, uh, she came back with like, uh, asked if I wanted, the, I wanted her to just hit a drone. <laughs> Because she knew ultimately that's what you were trying to yeah, figure out. I she was, was like, like, I'm trying why to don't model. I just hit a drum? Yeah. And I was like, that would also work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, so they got a, um, a, a really this nice photography drone uh, that had a broken camera. So uh -huh. it was just sitting around and they were willing to sacrifice it for science or, I mean, <laughs> science. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, go I, easy there. Very huh? real. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 um, to, to, to answer a question that I am trying to answer through scientific means, you know, yeah. like through, through uh, rigorous analysis, um, to get me data to feed into the model. So um, she did. She, yeah. they, they put a drone up. Yeah, they flew it over the court, um, uh, had someone fly it, and she stood behind the, the baseline and like, uh, had it hovering over the net. And we have footage. Oh, yes. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Let's take a look. That was great. Yeah. That was great. That, I don't know if that skews the curve. She'd well, be better at that well, than most people. Well, that's the thing. I had, I had, so I had my model that was like based on what data I could find that had suggested that it would take a tennis pro. My estimate was that it would take from that distance with that model drone like five to seven serves to, to score a hit. Um, and she got it on her third serve. Yeah. So 
Um, I don't know if that's a just statistical outlier or if it's just the Serena Williams outlier. I sort of think it's that one. Let's give it to Serena. I yeah. Think. Um. <laughs> that's what I think we should do. Randall's book, How To, Absurd Scientific Advice for Common Real World Problems is out now. So cool to talk to you. Thanks for all you do. Seriously. Thank you. Yeah, really good.